Hey, welcome everyone in this new tutorial about Diablo gen Dungeon Generation. In this tutorial, we are, si we are simply going to spawn our end tile because we are not currently. And so we are going to open up our BP level generator and we are going to go to the function generate tile layout and in this function we are looping through the number of tile we want that's our value amounts and we are building and we are building our main path what i'm going to call the main path uh, the, the 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 list of all the generic tiles and once we've done with that what we want to do we want to add an end tile but where do we want to add it? We want to add an end tile uh, in the in the end of the dungeon. So what is the the so we can get our previous location? This is the last the location of the last tile we spawned. We 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 generated in our layout. I mean because we didn't spawn them yet we want to i think we want to find the random next location for the end tile so and we want it to be north or south i think uh, we're just going to say random for now and like this and we want to connect the preview style and the location we found from the reverted cardinal here so this is this is going to tell the dungeon generator to add an end tile at a random location around our last tile our last stored tile information uh, so now what we need to do is to tell the level generator what to do when it finds an end tile to spawn. So we're just going in our get tile class function. We are adding one branch to say, hey, is, is the tile an end tile? If not, just spawn a start tile. If yes, spawn an end tile. And we're going to so here you can see it doesn't it doesn't tell me it doesn't give me the end tile we created in our previous tutorial that's because the end tile went into small blueprint form and it got it got unloaded from our memory and now that we opened it up we can actually specify we want an end tile here and just for the sake of Clearly seeing what's going on in the level generator, we're going to change that material to something obvious that we cannot miss. Actually, uh, sorry, I'm going to find the cube material. I'm going to make a material. I'm going to find the cube material. I'm going to make a material instance of it. I'm going to drag and drop. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to call that MI Gray. I'm going to open it up. Oh, I cannot change the material. Okay, I'm going to open up the cube material. I'm going to transform that into a parameter. I'm going to call that grayscale. I'm in color. I'm going to compile. And now I want that to be lighter by default. And I want the MI gray to customize the color. I want that to be uh, a, a green, a little green. So this is not going to be called MI gray. This is going to be called MI pale green. And I'm going to use that as a material for our floor of our end tile. And if I'm hitting play, I should have an end tile spawning in the end of the level. Yeah, I was a bit afraid it might not work. And we didn't specify the the connection of the end tile. We might need an end tile of each. So what we can see here is that we only have one type of end tile. 
So if we are not building it the way we should, uh, I mean the connection. Here we will need uh, an end tile connected from the south, from the south, whereas here we will need an end tile connected from the north. But that's going to be for another video, or no, no, it's going to be for that one. So we're going to have a new folder called end tiles. And we're going to drag in to create a child blueprint class of our end tile. This is going to be called end north 01. Yep. We're going to drag and drop that in our in oh, excuse me in our end tile folder. We're going to need a south. We're going to need an east. We're going to need a west. And we're going to do the same thing we did for our list of tiles. We're going to open them up, tell them they have a branch in here so they don't get small again. And then we're going to specify what connection they have. In our class defaults, I'm in the, the eastern exits, the southern exit, the western exit and the northern exit. And if we hit compile, we should now see them properly connected with their arrow. We need to build up the logic that will select it, that will select them. So in here, in our I'm going back to our BP level generator. We have a little function in here that checks if a tile as a connect as a list of connection that matches a connection another connection i believe we're going to make that a function so i'm selecting i'm selecting this and that i'm promoting this to a function and this is called uh, matching our connection matching this is going to be a pure function. This is going to return a boolean event called return value. We're going to go in that function. We're going to promote stamp valid tile to a local variable. This is going to be true by default. Actually, we do not want to care about the default value of our local variable, so we are just going to say by default the the tiles we give him is valid. We are returning our local variable once we are done checking everything about it. So what do we what are we doing here? Our connection matching is this connection. So we st we're temporarily storing the connection to check uh, in connections against connections. So I'm trying to kill the last parameter. Yeah, we don't want it. So we want to, what do we want to do here? Actually, we do not want to store that in a temporary variable. Oh, actually, yeah, we do because we want to loop through the keys of one of them. So we want to loop through these keys. We want to loop through the key of the connection. We want to find and we want to test it against the connections. And if it's invalid, yep, I think that works. Get tile class. We're going to refresh that node. We're going to say, hey, are these connections matching? If yes, we're going to add our tile 
like this. And where, why are we doing that? Because we're going to need this function to check for our end tile. So this is our generic tile lists, but we also have an end tile list. We're going to hit compile, we're going to delete everything, and then we're going to add our list of end tile. And then what do we want to do? Actually, we basically want to do the same thing than here. So we are going to promote that to a function. Uh, look for valid, uh, find random valid tile. So this is basically getting an array. I think that's perfect, actually, if I'm going there. Yep, he didn't like the fact that it's not local variable anymore. So what do we do here? We're giving him an array of tiles, and then we're finding in this array of tile if any are matching the connection we want. If any is matching, we're adding it to an array. And once we are done, we are returning a random tile in our array. So I believe that's pretty clean. And let me just see if, I, if I'm hitting play, if we have the same result that we did. I didn't break anything, did I? No, I did not. Okay, fine. And so what do we want to do here? We want to do the same thing that we did for the generic tile. We want to find random valid tile, but this time we want to look through our list of end tile for that connection. And if we if we hit play, we should have an end tile properly connected to the rest of our dungeon. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. It's I think it it's working right away. Yep, it is. Uh, I think that's, that is going to wrap up that video. Uh, hope you guys liked it and hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.